So can, can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect. OK, hi there uh, to my presentation. You already announced me so nicely. Thank you. Um, so I'm Miriam. I'm working as a program manager at Microsoft 365 Defender. Uh, so that means I'm gathering insights from our top, uh, yeah, from our most important customers and feeding the insights also into the product to improve the product. Um, I did not work in that position for my entire career at Microsoft. Um, so before I joined that position, I was working as a premier field engineer, which is some kind of consultant. And this is also where my story starts. Because when I was a premier field engineer, um, I worked with customers and I did security assessments. So customers wanted to know how secure the infrastructure is. And I assessed the infrastructure and presented what they could improve and how they could be attacked. And um, after presenting um, or after assessing and presenting, uh, usually customers also needed my help. And uh, I helped them also to build their security operations center. And um, this is a little bit background on how I came up with event list. Um, usually, if you look at how attackers operate, uh, most of the time, attackers have all the time in the world to prepare. And this is not an accurate picture of myself, how I worked with my customers. This should demonstrate an attacker. Um, but usually, attackers have all the time in the world to prepare. And when the attacker uh, launches the attack, usually between 24 hours, 48 hours, the entire organization, the entire environment is compromised. But how long does it take until uh, they find out that they have been compromised? And well, if they find out at all, uh, it takes longer than 200 days. And um, yeah, one reason is that the monitoring in most environments is not really accurate and does not really tell the organization about uh, any attacks going on. And um, the goal is, of course, to keep the attacker out of the environment and to detect it as soon as possible. And to help with not only detection, but also with security recommendations, uh, Microsoft has released the Microsoft Security Compliance Toolkit, which you can download um, on this website shown here. And um, within this tool, uh, tool set or toolkit, you don't only find tools uh, like the policy analyzer, uh, you also have security baselines. And we have, if we have a closer look into one of those security baselines with a policy uh, analyzer, uh, you can see that uh, those security baselines not only contain recommendations, but also event um, recommendations, so what to monitor, so monitoring recommendations, auditing recommendations. Um, just a hint, uh, now that you know about those amazing baselines, don't go ahead and just turn them on for your environment. No, please be careful because those are the best practices. And if you just apply best practices without uh, really having evaluated what you want to apply, then you maybe lock something out that you will regret. Therefore, be careful uh, with applying those uh, uh, policies, um, but it's definitely worth a try. Okay, coming back to the auditing recommendations. Um, you can see here, here are several uh, settings that are recommended, success and failure um, for, for example, here, credential validation. Um, but well, what does that mean? So if you look into uh, the event log, you already see so many events. And um, well, if you turn on those audit policies, even more events are being generated. And back then I worked with a customer and my customer um, heard about this uh, tool set and uh, about the baselines and was like, oh yeah, that is great. But uh, do you know what event ID is? Um, 
um, okay. Um, so, so, so my customer um, asked me, yeah, well, this is great, but do you know which event IDs um, are being generated if I turn on this baseline? Uh, is there a documentation? And in fact, we do have a documentation, but the documentation um, is around, I think, 754 pages or something like that. And I told my customer, yes, we do have this amazing document. You feel, find all the details there. And my customer was like, uh, well, maybe something smaller that we can really use to uh, apply all those uh, baselines and evaluate what event IDs are being generated. And I was like, hmm, no, I'm sorry. There's not, not, not a one pager. And so my customer asked me uh, to write down all the events that would be generated if they would apply this certain baseline, for example, for Windows Server 2016. And I was not super excited because that was a lot of work, but well, the customer paid me. And so I sat down and I wrote down all the event IDs that would be generated if they applied the server baseline for Windows Server 2016. And I was almost done when the customer approached me and came to my desk and um, they asked me, well, while you're doing that, um, we also would like to apply this baseline to uh, domain controllers. And what about uh, Windows Server 2012 R2? And what about the, this other baseline and this baseline, and this baseline too? Can you also write down all the events that are being generated for those baselines? And I was like, OMG, no way. Because if I would really write down all the events, and correlate them to all those baselines uh, that would take years. And so, yeah, I was not too happy about the ask, but I thought um, what I could do, and this is when I came up with event list in the first version. So event list in the first version was an Excel document with some macros behind, and you had the uh, option to import baselines. So just right out of the security compliance toolkit. And then um, a drop down was generated and you can choose which baseline you wanted to select. And then you could uh, click on generate event list for a baseline. And a baseline or an event list was generated. So here you could see um, all the event IDs, the um, categories, that this uh, audit recommendation would fall in. Also a link to get more information about the event and the audit recommendation. And the customer was happy. Um, I moved on, I worked with other customers and also showed uh, event list. So back then I called my, my Excel document event list. And um, I talked to other customers and um, one other customer um, came to me and said, yeah, event list is great, uh, but have you heard about MITRE ATT&CK? And um, I don't know if you have heard about MITRE ATT&CK. I think you, you did, but for those who haven't, um, MITRE ATT&CK is a framework to systematically map attackers' behaviors to help closing uh, gaps in organizations' cyber defense and protection. And um, there is this amazing website and you have a lot of scenarios there and you have all the um, attack uh, techniques and areas. Um, so you see here are the areas, you have here the techniques and you can map the attacks, uh, the attack scenarios uh, into this framework uh, to uh, really check if you have covered the scenario. And uh, of course, I heard about MITRE ATT&CK, uh, but I haven't. I never thought about really um, also seeing this in the in the um, correlation of the event IDs and event uh, list. And so I thought, okay, how can I map that? And if you look at Windows event IDs, because event list only correlates Windows event IDs, and if you only look at Windows event IDs, this covers this small part from data sources. Um, so yes, event list can help you, 
to improve your um, detection strategy. But remember, it's only Windows event IDs. And uh, therefore, uh, there's a lot more work to do. Here, a close up. Um, in general, um, I worked with a lot of customers. So this is when um, event list was developed um, to the state that it is today. And um, I helped them building their socks. And usually there were three questions coming up when I worked with customers. So first question, you already heard it. Um, if I apply a certain baseline, what events are being generated? The second question, what events should be forwarded? Because, well, maybe customers don't have all the storage space in the world. Um, there are, uh, yeah, lock solutions that you need to pay if you want to have more storage space. So this can get quite ex expensive if you are not prepared. So what are the most important events to audit? And last but not least, if you have all the data, uh, what do you do with it? Uh, well, some, some people I, I worked with uh, in the past said, well, we, we, after, I've, after I asked the question, what are you doing uh, if you collect all these events? And some people said, well, we keep these events for forensic purposes. So in case that we are getting breached, that we have everything there. But well, you don't want to just keep it for forensic purposes, because if you are getting breached and if you have never looked at the data, uh, you will have no idea what happened. And therefore, last but not least, you want to be proactive and you want to build hunting queries. And this is what I try to address with event list. And um, yeah, so this was what I worked in event list uh, first version. So um, it quickly was uh, developed into a UI. So what started with an Excel uh, sheet, I turned uh, over into PowerShell UI. And um, yeah, I also got a lot of feedback. And one feedback was, um, can you also make it accessible via PowerShell uh, command line, not only via the UI, because people would like to automate. And of course, I did. And this is the current version that is released. So you have uh, not only the UI, but you also have the command line. And this is what I'm going to demo right now. So I recorded the demo for you. And um, of course, everything starts with PowerShell. It was written in PowerShell. So um, type in open event list GUI uh, to open and um, event, uh, event list UI opens. And you can see here are all the um, MITRE attack um, areas and techniques. OK, uh, it needs to be a little bit refreshed, but um, it's still there and the old um, um, original um, uh, MITRE attack framework, which you still can't correlate. Um, and if you would like to also help with the refreshing uh, the data, because data refreshes all the time, let me know. Uh, I, I have my contact data later in the later slide. And um, what you can do now. Um, first question was, uh, what events are being generated if you apply a certain baseline? So I, uh, event list comes with uh, some pre-imported baselines. Um, and you can also import your own baselines, your own GPOs. But if you select a certain baseline, then it applies. And you can immediately see um, what MITRE attack techniques um, would be covered with that. Um, you can also import your own GPO or baseline. In this example here, I'm importing a GPO. And you just need to um, select the folder. If you select the folder, then uh, all baselines that are in this folder are imported. You see here the GPO was imported. I just imported a single GPO in this case. And if I uh, selected all the um, 
baselines are being imported. And here um, in the next example, I show um, how it looks like if I select an entire folder uh, with baselines that are partly already uh, imported in event list. And um, all the baselines that are already imported, uh, you see they are not imported once more, um, but all the other baselines that are missing are being imported. And it takes some time because of course it um, just um, scans the entire folder and checks if the baseline is already in the system or not. And um, once everything is imported, you see that there are many new baselines that you can now also use and select. So, but this does not yet answer what events are being generated. Um, of course, it's also possible to delete one baseline um, or to delete all baselines and to import um, your own baselines. So yeah, to um, have all baselines back, you need to import it. And um, before we go to the PowerShell demo, um, basically, I resetted everything uh, in the event list database before I started the PowerShell demo. So um, yeah. Um, so this is also possible via command line now. So you can check out um, what commands exist by using the get command cmd let. And those are all the commands that you can use currently. Um, with the get baseline from DB. Uh, you can show or display all the baselines that currently are imported into the database. And of course, you can uh, also remove all the baselines with remove all baselines. Uh, so you see all everything was deleted. Um, you can import them once again with import baseline from folder. You need to specify the path, um, the folder where, oh, sorry, I moved my mouse. Um, <laughs> you can specify the path where your uh, baselines are located um, with a path parameter. And here you go. Um, I just imported one baseline, or one GPO. And you can also um, import multiple baselines, just use a path or a folder where um, multiple baselines are located. So this takes some time. And once it's imported, you can use them as normal. And here we go. And you see um, also all the imported baselines are in the database. So um, for the further pro uh, process, you can, um, for example, use select uh, to only use one baseline. So you see the baseline name, um, but you can also just specify uh, the name um, to uh, do further operations. So the CMD lad remove one baseline, uh, does exactly that. It removes one baseline uh, from the database. And now with those commands, uh, you can use the command line to operate uh, event list without using the UI. So you can write your own uh, automations. And um, of course, it's also possible, as I said before, um, to only uh, to just use the name of a baseline. Uh, you can use the parameter baseline name. But as you saw before, um, it's also possible to pipe a baseline into the command, remove one baseline. And you see the baseline was removed. Um, now, this does not answer yet how um, you find out what events are being mapped to a certain uh, baseline. And this is what I will show in this demo here. 
So um, you select a baseline. And all the MITRE attack techniques are being populated and you click on generate event list um, on the right side of the panel. And now here in the pop-up, you have two options. The first option is to generate baseline events only. So that really addresses uh, if you want to understand what events are being generated if you apply a certain baseline. Um, and the other, the second um, option, uh, just does it from the other side around. So the, the output is different. The first one is uh, really what is shown if a baseline would be applied. And the second is to match MITRE attack with uh, event IDs. And you also have the option to export it as a CSV. So if you check that, um, then the folder uh, picker is open so that you can select uh, where your baseline should be stored. And if we here select baseline events only, click on OK, you immediately see all the event IDs and the links and also the additional information and audit recommendation uh, that is or that would be applied if you turn on this baseline. So if we say all MITRE attack events only, um, you can use a baseline, but you can also just uh, select the areas and techniques and select all MITRE attack events. And if you click on OK, you see here the technique, um, technique ID, uh, the technique name, uh, the event ID, event name, and also a link. And yes, um, there's still a lot of uh, description and link missing. So if you have some time and want to help me, that would be great. Here you see um, how you can pick a folder to export it as a CSV. Um, yeah. And this is also possible using PowerShell. Um, so get baseline from the DB is one of my best friends here in these demos uh, because it just gets me one uh, of the, the baseline names without uh, doing too much. And if you pipe it into get baseline um, event list, then you can see here everything that uh, I already showed you with the, we are the UI. But here it's a nice PowerShell object which you can use to uh, process later in your automation. And you have all the event ID, the um, description. And if you use um, uh, OutGrid view, you can also just have the same, same view as we had before in the UI. Um, the MITRE list is the command that get MITRE event list. And it's similar, but with the get MITRE event list, you get a lot more um, of events that I did not put a description in yet. Um, but uh, yeah, you can already use that to uh, do your, your correlation, to you, do your research. And also again here without grid view, you, you can open the uh, view once more. Um, you can always use the baseline name um, with the command. So you can, for example, pipe it there into get MITRE event list. And for better understanding, I show everything here in alt grid view. So if you would uh, use the Windows Server 2019 domain controller baseline, this is what MITRE attack techniques would be covered. Um, but you can also just pipe in uh, the technique names. So and in this scenario, in this uh, demo, um, I'm writing down uh, three different techniques and showing you that um, it can also just be piped into get MITRE event list. If you have a scenario, for example, uh, where you get all uh, the techniques out, uh, you can just type it into the command and see what event IDs would be generated. And here you go. Also, if possible, with uh, a link and a description 
but yeah. Of course, it's also possible to use the identity parameter. And um, in this demo, I show you, you can pass one technique there over the identity parameter, but you can also pass multiple techniques using the identity parameter. Let's use odd grid view because that's easier to see. So same thing in green. And you can also just use uh, the baseline name also using the identity parameter because identity parameter is just for the techniques or the uh, baselines. Um, so first question or first, um, yep, yeah, first question uh, is checked because now uh, you can uh, understand what events will be generated if you apply a certain baseline. And even better, uh, you can also map those uh, events to MITRE attack. Uh, the second question, which events should be forwarded? And um, this is also something that can be done via event list. Now, first I show you this via the UI. So select um, techniques, select baselines and use the generate agent config. And when I uh, wrote this tool, um, I was just before, it was just before I joined into my current position. So that was, I was super off euphoric that I became a PM for a Defender for Endpoint. So now it's called Defender for Endpoint. Back then it was called Microsoft Defender ATP. And therefore I had to uh, implement this Easter egg. I'm sorry, not sorry, but uh, yeah, that is still a remain from then. Uh, you have also Splunk Universal Forwarder, for example. And uh, this is just the syntax that um, uh, Splunk needs. Uh, you can just copy and paste it into your configuration. But you can also say, okay, you would like to have it X path um, in an X path output, which is, for example, ArcSight or Windows Event Forwarding or even Azure Sentinel. So you can just um, copy and paste it. And the same thing is possible if you use the command line. And here um, it's the get agent config string. And with get help, which is uh, from the PowerShell help system, uh, you can just see what is possible with this commandlet. Um, so you see here, um, I have the parameter forwarder name specified. And um, of course, also the identity um, parameter with the identity. Again, you can use either baselines or techniques. Um, but um, with a forwarder name, um, currently you can specify Splunk, XPath, or MDATP. Well, MDATP does not make too much sense to specify it here because as I said, only an Easter egg, but um, Splunk and XPath um, are definitely worth your time. If you have other ideas for other agent forwarders, let me know how the syntax looks like and what forwarder you would like to see implemented. And so you can use here get agent config string um, using identity. And in this example, I use a technique. Well, not, not one technique, uh, technique, but multiple techniques. Um, and then um, after I specify the techniques, um, you can select the forwarder. And remember, current uh, options are Splunk and XPath, or worthwhile options. And if I specify Splunk, here you go, you directly have your whitelisting options. And if I specify XPath, it's in XPath syntax. Yeah, as I said, MDATP is not the most worthwhile option at this very moment because you don't need event IDs for MDATP. Um, 
here, um, of course, it's also possible to use an, um, a, baseline, a baseline name uh, to with the, the uh, identity parameter. Uh, in this case, I just pipe in there. So um, you can use the pipe for get agent config string. And here you go, you see the entire event IDs that would make sense for this uh, baseline. And yeah, so that's basically the agent forwarder function. So next topic, check. Uh, you can also see what events are worthwhile your time and your storage space to be forwarded. And last question. Um, what to do, how can you proactively hunt? Um, how do you know uh, which queries are the best here? And to do that, first I thought, okay, I could build it my, my, uh, by my own, everything to just translate all the queries until I found out, oh, there is actually already a project which does that, uh, which is called Sigma. And uh, Sigma uh, uses a generic signature description, uh, so-called YAML files. And um, using the Sigma converter, um, it just translates it into each language. And I was also, um, yeah, I'm also uh, responsible that uh, they also implemented Azure Log Analytics um, back then. And um, yeah, so. I used to work with someone uh, from the field um, who, who uh, with whom I, I um, did a lot of work to get that implemented. Um, yeah. Um, so basically, this is already available. And this just translates everything that you write in YAML format into uh, the language of your choice. And therefore, I uh, rely on Sigma to um, translate all the queries. And here is a demo. And Sigma is written in Python. So um, yeah, it could take some time. And here in this demo, um, I explain that later. In this demo, um, here I um, select a baseline. And if I don't have um, Sigma pre-installed, so there is an option to configure event list. I will show that later. If event list is configured, then uh, it is already translated into from PowerShell into Python, into the uh, and um, everything is generated. Um, if Sigma is not configured in the event list configuration, then um, you can just have the queries that you would need to use uh, to generate the Sigma output. And here I use Microsoft Defender ATP because yes, it makes sense to um, have also queries uh, for a Defender. Here are the advanced hunting queries and um, you can specify where it should be stored. And here you see, um, I only have the markdown file and the txt um, so the markdown file just shows you um, everything in plain markdown so um, in this option in the first option i did not configure event list so that means you see here um, there's the python axi um, which calls sigma and then with every yaml file uh, that it should translate um, and the, the benefit of the markdown file is if you need to write documentation, you just can just copy and paste it. And your uh, documentation system already should um, format it properly. And you just can alter it and edit it. And yeah, you can just copy it. And um, if you have a backend Sigma server, you can just run it there. So um, you have all the YAML file also as an output. Uh, in the YAML folder, you have the txt file. There you have uh, just the plain queries you need to run. And um, you can just take the entire package. Here are the YAML files onto your backend server and use one system to generate um, the output. 
There is also the option just to generate YAML format. This is just for documentational purposes. So um, if you select that and specify where it should be uh, stored, then you get the a folder with the YAML files. And in the markdown file, you see um, all the YAML output just pasted in there um, so that you can work with that and specify your own queries. I, yeah, and in the YAML folder, um, you have the YAML files. I already told you about um, configuring event list, and there is this button, configure event list, and there is configure Sigma path. If you select that, you can choose where the Sigma C file is located. And here we go, it's usually in the tools folder. I select the folder, I click OK. And if everything worked, then you will see, OK, the Sigma path is shown with a Sigma C file. And now event list is configured to accept um, direct queries to Sigma. And here I select Splunk and say, OK, let's generate. Uh, you select the folder where the output should, stored, uh, should be stored and click OK. And this takes some time because I already said, um, my tool is written in PowerShell, Sigma is written in Python, and yeah, my PowerShell tool calls Python to then generate the queries to go back to PowerShell, and therefore I'm just fast forwarding here. This takes a lot of time, or some time at least. And here you go, um, the queries are written. And in this case, you see three files. You see the markdown file, you see the text file, and the log file. Uh, in the markdown file, you have a similar uh, format, but here you have the translated query that you can already use. You can also use it for documentation purpose, of course. Then, um, yeah, of course, you can also just inspect everything. Then you have also the txt file with just the plain queries. No need to just have all the documentation stuff if you don't need it. And there's also the log file. And you see what YAML files were processed. And if some files were not supported, and if there were errors, then you will see it here in this log. Um, so you see here, this feature is not supported. So either um, the language is not able, uh, or the, the, not the language, but the, the tool is not able to understand something like that to interpret uh, to interpret something like that or it's not yet supported and either um, you can for example uh, reach out to the sigma team to get it supported to also um, work on your own stuff uh, uh, to get it supported by yourself or you can maybe also understand why it's not supported because maybe the uh, target system does not support any operation like that and you also have the YAML files again. Now in PowerShell, this is also possible. So you have the CMD let get Sigma supported theme from database. And with that, you can see what options you can enter uh, or to which systems you can translate. And here I'm just writing down some uh, technique IDs. And if you use the, or if you pipe those techniques, into the function, get Sigma queries. Uh, you specify the path where your output queries should be stored. So basically just the same thing that we did from the UI, but now uh, we are the command line. And you specify the seam name and the seam name is one of the names that you um, already saw uh, here or that you can um, evaluate using get Sigma supported seam from database. And here you go, um, all the, the, again, the markdown file, the text file and the YAML folder. You can also do the same um, with any other uh, language uh, or with any other target system. 
uh, that is supported. And of course, this does not only work um, with uh, the techniques. You can also just specify a baseline and also either pipe it or uh, specify it. And using, again, get Sigma queries, using a path and the name of your target uh, system. You can also uh, translate the entire baseline into event IDs and into hunting queries. And in this scenario, um, event is, is not yet configured. So you see here, um, you would just get the queries to export it and to run them in your backend. And here, get Sigma queries also supports the identity parameter. So either you pipe it or you specify it using the identity parameter. Again, use the path where you want to save your query uh, output and also specify the target system. And here you go. Well, this is not a very big file, I would say, because I just specified one technique in this example, but nevertheless, maybe there's a use case you want to do that. There's also the option to get YAML only output. So that other uh, option that you already saw in the UI. Um, so that does mean uh, it does not translate anything. You have the plain YAML output there. Um, maybe it makes sense for you to just uh, specify certain techniques uh, to only get the output from YAML to know what the query should look like. So YAML file is just there to uh, have a understanding of what you should monitor. Um, now, um, as I said, um, we can configure also event list from the command line. You use the add event list configuration and specify the path using the parameter sigma path. If you use get sigma path, you see that it's configured um, if the right path was specified. Um, so you can also use get sigma path to check if it's configured or not. Um, if we want to, to uh, implement checks. And now um, you can run also get Sigma queries, piping techniques or baselines, or specifying it uh, using identity. And here you go. Um, yeah, it needs a little bit. So the log file is created first. Um, I fast forward here a little bit. You see how the log file uh, grows. And um, once the MD file and the TXT file is in the folder, uh, you know that everything was written. And here you go with your nice queries. But you can also remove the sigma path or the uh, configuration with a uh, remove event list configuration if you want to automate that. Now get sigma path is empty. Um, yeah, there are maybe some scenarios where you just want to automate everything from the command line. And last but not least question, hunting queries, check. So um, you can also do um, or generate hunting queries not only from the UI, but also from the command line. And I also implemented some additional goodies. Um, so let me just quickly show what we have here because you maybe noticed that there is also the YAML admin option. And this option is there to um, 
be the master of your own YAML files. So if you say, okay, everything that is already in the event list, well, I don't like that stuff, please remove that. Uh, you can remove the existing configuration, but you can also import uh, existing YAML files if you want to enrich event list by with using your own YAML files. And if you select um, certain techniques um, and areas, you can. I was a little bit too fast here. So if you select um, the techniques and areas, you can use generate GPO and create a GPO out of it, um, specify where it should be stored. Currently um, with generate GPO, only the advanced audit policies are generated, but I'm also working on um, maybe also getting PowerShell logs in there at some point. And you see here a nice GPO with all the audit functions. And you can also do that uh, using the command line. Uh, remove all YAML configuration, just removes everything from the database, uh, just dumps everything. And with import YAML configuration from folder, uh, you can import your own YAML files and um, yeah, just use the path to specify where those YAML files are located. I'm fast forwarding a little bit because that is a huge amount of YAML files that I'm uh, importing here in this demo. <laughs> so um, here you go, everything is imported. And uh, now let's have a look um, how you can create your GPO out of um, just techniques. Um, if you just specify um, a certain amount of techniques, the GPO is also not the most extensive GPO, but maybe there are use cases where you would like to do that. So in this example here, I uh, specify three techniques. And um, pipe it into get group policy from my techniques. Um, specify the path where it should be stored. And here you go, your very own GPO. And you can also look into it here. It also has a nice uh, GUID generated. And you have everything in there that you need to um, detect those MITRE techniques um, from uh, the specify, uh, from the specified techniques, sorry. Uh, you can also use the identity parameter. So this is also an option. You can pipe it, you can use the identity parameter, you can use MITRE attack techniques. Well, it would not make sense to use baselines uh, and pipe it into another baseline, but uh, I think that's also possible. Um, but yeah, so feel free what you like to do here with uh, creating policies. And here is a short overview of all the um, CMD LEDs that are available, so all the functions that are available that come uh, with event list in the current version. Um, you can also just, uh, if you work with uh, event list, you can just use the uh, normal uh, get command uh, CMD LED, which is part of the PowerShell help system. Uh, specifying the module parameter and um, specifying that you want to have uh, all the CMD lets from event list uh, specified. Um, and I mentioned before, um, currently I'm doing all the work on event list on my own. So that means that it takes a lot of work, a lot of time to get changes in. And um, I still have some, some stuff on my computer that I haven't submitted yet because um, I'm still working on it. And it just is a huge amount of work for one person only. So if you have any interest, if you are passionate about detecting, passionate about improving open source uh, tools, uh, I would love to have you on my team uh, with Eventlist. And uh, yeah, maybe you have even your own ideas and suggestions uh, what we can realize. Let me know. Uh, you can either 
do your own work and just create a pull request, but uh, I would suggest reach out to me first. Um, but here you have all the options, how you can contact me. So in the best case, we are Twitter. Um, my DMs are open. Uh, you find my repository event list on GitHub. And uh, yeah, so just summarized. Uh, security auditing is great and you definitely need it to uh, be aware if your environment is under attack or if fishy stuff is going on in your environment. And to help you with uh, the detection, just using event IDs, uh, event list can help you. And you now can even uh, automate your own operations. And last of, but not least, I'm super interested what ideas you have, uh, what's your use case. So uh, let me know uh, if you use Eventlist. Uh, I would definitely love to hear about how you use it. Um, there are already some open source uh, projects out there that uh, use Eventlist as a base. Uh, so let me know. Um, I'm, I'm excited about your use case. And uh, yeah, thanks for that. Um, that was Eventlist. Excellent. Thank you very much for an amazing presentation, Miriam, and uh, great demo as well, even though it's fantastic that you actually pre-recorded it because I prefer to do my demos live and something always goes wrong, but Me that's too. just the thrill of it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, absolutely fascinating that you actually worked on this open source uh, project yourself for such a long time, and it's so comprehensive. I was particularly impressed by the... Um, uh, fact that you support so many forwarders, right? So uh, almost every single SIM system that I can think about, it was actually listed. I'm like, okay, um, <laughs> I might actually get back to you on one of the newer SIM systems, um, uh, which you might want to integrate later on, but I don't think that's ready yet. I actually have a question. Well, I had several questions. I think we yes. were waiting for more questions to uh, come. Again, a reminder to everyone, if you would like to ask questions, you can do it in the YouTube Q&A chat or go to sli.do slash OWASP. So slido slash OWASP, as I advertised previously, please do ask questions. Um, I had a few questions when I was watching. So one thing was uh, probably a comment rather than a question. When you showed me the, showed the log, the log file and, uh, didn't have timestamps. <laughs> so basically so executing this, that, but then so you know when they reach to the unsupported feature, when there was an error, that was the log file. It didn't have the timestamps. That's the log file which the tool was generating. Oh, um, that, that's important, But I think it would be just good to yeah. actually understand how long things take because obviously there are so many steps that it's running. And it would yeah. be good to uh, understand, you know, by just looking at the timestamps. And of course, the next question I had was on the unsupported quit, unsupported feature. So if um, uh, there's an unsupported feature in Sigma, which is being hit, uh, then of course I can see you, you had, there was a Python error message in there. Is it something that, uh, for example, by asking for more open source contributors, they can come and come and help you out to basically make sure that the uh, that feature is implemented in the product? Yeah, uh, just to clarify, so um, Sigma is not my my open source tool. Uh, I just leverage it because uh, it is already awesome. Um, I'm just leveraging it for the hunting queries. Um, so if people want to contribute, uh, there is also, let me just go back. Um, I think I, um, I also linked the page. Um, here you go. Uh, this is the uh, Sigma repository. So if you want to contribute there, um, go ahead and also uh, connect with Florian. Um, and um, yeah, I'm, Florian I'm sure Roth, yeah, I think uh, exactly. is a name known to a lot of uh, cybersecurity people. Yeah, so we, of course, we're aware of Sigma. So that's, uh, yeah, that's great. So if we, uh, we can basically enhance it and make sure that the um, Sigma is fully supported on all the features, which is great. Yes. Um, so there are basically several reasons why um, some some queries might not be supported. Um, so one thing is, well, maybe Sigma does not support it yet. Uh, the other reason could be uh, the target system, the target theme does not have such a function or does not offer such a function. So yeah, this is uh, unfortunately another um, sad reason 
I don't know what we can do to fix that uh, other than get hired by the uh, scene vendor and write the detection yourself or write the feature yourself, <laughs> but yeah. Right, right. Uh, okay, yeah, that's uh, totally uh, understood. So we say that's basically the mapping of the feature, which is uh, yes. missing. Um, uh, yeah, and the other thing that I've noticed, of course, in the uh, GUI, you did have like a new, the question is, uh, would it be possible uh, to have a feature where a user can create a predefined thread IDs bundled in sort of their own collections and they can name it for, I don't know, red teaming or blue teaming or I don't know, some code name project so they can mm -hmm. bundle several thread IDs into one name and they can just um, uh, use them like that. You showed, there, there was a one yeah. box on the GUI that you showed which said collections, right? And then, so it's like a generic one, but it's basically mm -hmm. to create the custom ones. Um, so people could basically do a cherry pick thread IDs uh, themselves for a particular mm -hmm. exercise, for example, a purple teaming, I think that would be good. Yeah, so, so you can see the last one, which you says just says collection. So it's a pre execution. So these are like a different stages of the metric. But my point is, yeah. it would be possible to basically create own grouping, um, right? For the for the company who is in general, using yes. Yeah, and just basically collect them because I know on the command line when you show the PowerShell, you can basically give a CSV list of them, and it probably would be possible to automate them if you pre-save those uh, threat IDs into a file. Yeah. But on the GUI, I think it would be good to have a feature of sort of custom um, threat IDs. Yeah, let, let me quickly switch my presentation um, monitor, then I can show you uh, if that's of interest, uh, how the database behind looks like. Because everything is possible if you uh, already have the database there uh, or the database access. Let me just share once more. And here you go. Yeah, we can see a screen. Yeah, there you go. That's uh, amazing. The, uh... Amazing. So um, the question was if we can specify what we see here. So if you can specify your own MITRE attack framework, for example. Um, and the answer is yes, but you would have also to map stuff. Um, so what I do have here, so I have the events main. Events main, please, here you go. Okay, I already had it open. And this is basically where I all have all the events uh, mapped to uh, documentation. Um, source ID, uh, this is also something that I'm currently working on. I also try to um, specify the um, source, the log source. Um, you also have the success failure and the recommendation ID, um, which you can then um, link. Um, I have here the event ID, uh, the event name, the link. And this is basically uh, the best table of all because you have all the stuff here. And um, what I also do sometimes if somebody asks me about a certain event ID, for example, if I look for firewall, I just quickly uh, open my database and just uh, query for all events that have firewall in the event name. See, excellent. Um, so the switch is already there. So it's just in the back end database. Uh, yes, you, you can. Um, here, the MITRE uh, attack techniques are in the MITRE techniques. And then you have the, where's the, um, the, okay, now I'm blind. That's great uh, because I'm, I'm presenting. That's always uh, the thing. <laughs> no problem. Um, yeah, but okay, I can see the map there, so obviously, because of the database. And exactly. I, I just think it would be good to have a, uh, like a GUI interface. Uh, yeah. So the user could actually do it. From the uh, from the UI rather than uh, hack into the backend uh -huh. database to modify it there, but obviously the feature is available and it's great to see that the database is already geared up for that that sort of customization. If a, uh, a user actually wants to customize the tool to their requirements and yeah, for the, your example with firewall is actually a good one, right? So for example, someone can just go and search for the um, all the threats with the word firewall in it and identify them yeah. all. Yeah, and um, if you are up to develop a new feature for event list. I'm so happy to have you on the team. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, so if we, uh, if you have a great idea, um, for example, um, 
specify that from the UI. Um, happy to uh, brainstorm with you how that can be done. Excellent, excellent. Right, let's check if we have any more questions on the YouTube um, uh, chat or on the q and I think we're only seeing a thank you, saying great talk, useful tool and fantastic presentation. Many thanks, Miriam. Many thanks for presenting Dallas London. I think this is it. Thanks. <laughs>